Hey everyone, Misko Electric here. Today is Sunday, May 19th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. As we predicted in the last episode, this was a very big week for EV news, so let's get right to it. On Tuesday, the Biden administration officially announced drastic increases in tariffs applied to Chinese imported goods in many categories, including electric vehicles and batteries. The administration said this is a response to China's unfair trade practices and is designed to counteract resulting harms to American workers and businesses. The president directed his trade representative to increase tariffs under Section 301 of the Trade Act of 1974 on $18 billion of imports from China. The White House says China's forced technology transfers and intellectual property theft have contributed to its control of 70, 80, and even 90 percent of global production for the critical inputs necessary for our technologies, infrastructure, energy, and healthcare, creating unacceptable risks to American supply chains and economic security. Tariffs for electric vehicles imported from China will increase from 25% to 100% this year. The tariff on Chinese lithium-ion EV batteries and other battery parts will increase from 7.5% to 25% this year. The tariff rate for certain other critical minerals will increase from 0 to 25% in 2024 as well. In 2026, the same jump will go into effect for lithium-ion batteries intended for use in other sectors. New tariffs of 25% will go into effect for natural graphite and permanent magnets in 2026. Government officials have made it clear that they intend to protect U.S. industry with these reactive trade policies. I think it's also important to look at the underlying premises and to consider the unintended consequences pertaining to American consumer choice and cost. Every five years, the Chinese government publishes a high-level economic blueprint, and they've been doing it for generations. Back in 2001, EV technology was included as a priority topic of research and development. By 2009, China started offering consumer subsidies for what they call new energy vehicles, or NEVs. A decade later, there were hundreds of EV manufacturers in China. Today, they've got over 20 million EVs on their roads. U.S. policymakers and legacy automakers chose to ignore all of this for over a decade, and the best Chinese EVs passed them by years ago. In recent years, Ford, GM, and Stellantis have received subsidies totaling tens of billions of taxpayer dollars to produce competitive EVs. Along with the UAW, they've succeeded at lobbying our elected leaders to prevent U.S. consumers from gaining access to some of the world's best EVs at lower prices. These tariffs will result in many unintended consequences. In order to fully articulate my views, I'll need more time than we have in this segment to clarify misinformation around Chinese and U.S. government intervention, the realities of labor costs and automation, and the structural disadvantages which prevent U.S. legacy automakers from matching the value of today's best EV manufacturers. We will produce a separate segment which clears all of this up, and we will publish it to our industry channel at youtube.com slash at industry. I hope you'll subscribe there to be notified when it goes live. Feel free to leave your thoughts on these tariffs in the comments below. Next up, Kia has revealed the revamped 2025 EV6. The front headlamps have been updated and the interior's infotainment display has also been enhanced. It will now support over-the-air software updates beyond navigation and have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The steering wheel design is new, and they've incorporated the fingerprint reader we've seen in Hyundai Group's sister vehicle, the Genesis GV60. The new EV6 will have about 11% greater battery capacity. The pack size will rise to 84 kilowatt hours from 77.4 kilowatt hours. The effect on range has not yet been specified, and we don't know when it will come to the US, but what are your thoughts on the new EV6? Another update I want to touch on real quick is regarding Volkswagen's revived sub-brand, Scout, which will offer electric trucks and SUVs. They broke ground at their production facility near Columbia, South Carolina back in February. Landscape grading, soil stabilization, and utility relocation and upgrading has been underway at the 1,100-acre plot. 
A few weeks ago, the foundations were laid for the physical buildings and the first vertical steel beams have been installed this past week. A new highway interchange is scheduled to facilitate factory-specific traffic and a rail connection has been permitted. The production center's main structures are set to include a body shop, a paint shop, and final assembly buildings. The site also features a training center for employees and a technology center to support their future vehicles. Scout plans to ultimately produce 200,000 vehicles annually. The first Scout, which is expected to be an SUV, will be announced this summer with a truck announcement within one year of that. Vehicle production is targeted to begin by the end of 2026. I'll link Scout's blog below if you want to keep up to date with their monthly updates. Charging infrastructure network ChargePoint has revealed details related to the megawatt charging dispenser they will have on display at this week's Advanced Clean Transportation Conference, also known as ACT. The dispenser is based on their modular PowerLink 2000 series, which can currently support up to 500 kilowatts. The new megawatt charging system will initially output 1.2 megawatts. They claim it will increase to up to 3 megawatts and it will have bi-directional charging capability. ChargePoint says the system is also designed to support electric marine and aviation applications. While ChargePoint is gearing up for megawatt charging, Watt EV is currently dispensing it. The commercial fleet charging infrastructure operator and truck as a service provider opened their fourth charging hub. Their first megawatt charging system in Bakersfield, California is capable of delivering up to 1.2 megawatts of power and claims the highest speed charging available in the U.S. Watt EV says it is the world's largest solar-powered truck charging depot. The site has 50 total chargers. There are 32 360 kilowatt CCS chargers on one side which are fed by the grid, three 1.2 megawatt megawatt charging systems, and 15 240 kilowatt CCS chargers on the other side draw from batteries and the solar array. At the beginning of the year, Watt EV said they were awarded a total of $75.6 million from the U.S. Federal Highway Administration to build out medium and heavy-duty electric truck charging infrastructure. They received $5 million in grant funding from the California Energy Commission for the Bakersfield Charging Depot, and they expect future support from the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District. Watt EV currently operates a station supporting commercial fleets at the port of Long Beach in California, with several other California locations in development. Speaking of larger electric vehicle fleets, Oakland Unified School District has become the first major school district in the country to convert all of their school buses to 100% electric and have bi-directional charging capability. Zoom, a student transportation platform, has provided 74 electric school buses and bi-directional chargers to the district. The site is managed by Zoom's AI-enabled technology platform. The fleet will not only transport students without fumes, but it will also provide power grid stability and resilience by operating as a virtual power plant. Zoom says this installation can offer 2.1 gigawatt hours of energy to the grid each year. Zoom claims that student transportation is the largest mass transit system in the nation, moving 27 million students twice a day. School buses are a sensible application of EV technology because daily route distances are predictable and the fleet is connected to the grid far more often than it is in motion. Well, that's all we have for this week's edition of The Current. We want to thank you for watching our first 11 episodes. We plan to continue to make more of these videos as long as we see growing viewership. Please consider subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.